Welcome to Derbyshire's dog section. It's home to the force's four-legged friends and the two-legged ones who drive them about. It's a specialist unit that provides one of the most fascinating services to the public of Derbyshire, with dogs able to sniff out people, drugs, cash, firearms and even bodily fluids. It's also one of the most unique jobs going, and for the handlers, such as PC Rachel Swift, they wouldn't have it any other way. I can't think of a better job in this force. I love it. I absolutely adore it. My office is the entire area of Derbyshire. I get to meet lots of people. I get to meet the weird, the wonderful, and that's just my colleagues. I absolutely enjoy it. I love working with my dogs. There are some downsides, of which, you know, things like um, having to go out in the middle of the night, absolutely soaking wet, searching for somebody, when traffic pull the window down about that much and say, yeah, they think they went over that way. And you're there with the wind, the rain, and you're going, yeah, I'm going to go and come back. And I look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards, because I probably have been by the dog. And then there's the advantages when you get something and you find someone and you're able to take that person back. And the family are really pleased because they've got the person back and they're happy. And then obviously there's the searching side of it when I work with my little dog, Sandy. Loads of jobs with her, loads of really good jobs. And again, meeting lots of people, helping officers to find stuff that sometimes just just don't, we know it's here, we know it's here, but we can't find it. That, the nose knows. There are 27 noses in the Derbyshire unit, ranging from general purpose to specialist search dogs. It's also home to 16 officers, two trainers and two kennel staff, all of whom have made their home at the dog section. Out here, next to us, is Janet and Kim's office. This is where our kennel staff live. They're all allowed out of this office. And in here, when the light comes on, these are photographs of all the dogs we've had that have now sadly passed away. And there was my, this is my Omar White German Shepherd, the one and only. And these are all my dogs. These are all them here. Milo, Meg, Leo, Jake, Carrie, Sandy and Flick. All there. Uh, um, that was Milo, not a combination. <laughs> that was hard work, getting to, trying to keep him smiling. Can't really say it's a smile, can you? I'm there grimacing. <laughs> Oh no, don't bite the cameraman. When you first get your dog, it, it's that initial, <gasps> you know, I don't want to break it, I don't want to destroy it, and then what am I going to do? And then you, you get used to the dog, the dog gets used to you, and because you do everything for your dog, you walk it, you groom it, you feed it, you do everything, the dog comes to rely on you, but then you rely on your dog. And the dog's there to back me up at jobs, the dog's there to protect me. It, it, it just becomes, you become part, it's just like a, a, a unit. God, I, I don't, when my dog van's empty, when I've dropped my dogs off, when I've taken it back somewhere, I don't feel the same. I feel like I've left half my, half my capability. It's gone. And it, and it hurts when something happens to them, when they get injured, or when they fall ill, or eventually when time takes them, it hurts. Um, a little part of your heart goes, poultry. <laughs> yeah. I, um, this year I lost my little search dog Meg, she was 16 and uh, unfortunately I had to make the decision for her to put to sleep because she was not getting too much for her and she was struggling and uh, she was determined right up to the last end that she was walking into the vets and she was doing it in her time so and she passed away in my arms and a little bit of, her, a little bit of my heart went with her. So, so it's there. The bond between the officers and their dogs is forged early, when both are put through their paces on an intense handler's course. But it's when they are finally paired up for good and heading out across the county that both parties really get to know who is at the other end of the lead. One of Rachel's last duties before retirement is a night shift. She's the handler for the northern half of Derbyshire with a counterpart patrolling the south, and it doesn't take long for the first call to come in. In a village near Alfreton, a group of would-be caravan thieves have dumped their stolen vehicle in a tight cul-de-sac and then fled into the darkness of nearby fields. That's where Rachel and her German shepherd Carrie join the hunt. After gathering a bit of information on where the Sussex may have headed, they set off. The 
The search leads them to a used car lot, but then comes a frustrating dead end. This time, the thieves have escaped. Carrie and Rachel head back to the van, and after helping out with the recovery of the stolen caravan, return to their patrol. But there isn't much time to dwell on the frustration. A short time later, a shout comes up from an officer on the road's policing unit. A stolen van has failed to stop near Killamarsh, right on the border with South Yorkshire. It loses control, smashes into a row of parked vehicles, and the driver flees on foot. Despite a search around residential streets by firearms units, he hasn't been found. So, once again, Rachel and Carrie get to work. But the driver slips the net and disappears off into the night. Thankfully though, they left plenty of forensic opportunities on the airbag of the stolen van. They got away, but that's not for the one to try. Sometimes the circumstances are just up against us. You've got the distance to get there. The area that they've run off to is highly dense, populated. You've got hard surfaces, you've got the weather rainy. You're up against it to some degree, but you give it a go. You never know. Go try it. You never know. We'll always have a go. I get lucky at the end of it. I think he's trying to. It's the night shifts in particular that give Rachel a chance to reflect on her 30 years as a police officer, and sometimes that reflection takes her all the way back to an incident that triggered her love of dog section in the first place. I would be about seven or eight, and one night I woke up to a bit of a commotion, wondered what it was, and looked out and to see a policeman with a dog working and was fascinated, that was it. Found out later that my dad had disturbed a burglar breaking into the garage and called the police and that the police had arrived with the dog man and he tracked the suspect and he actually found him and contained him in the coal yard which is down the road from us. And that was it, that was all I wanted to be, was a dog man. My mum did try and point out that I can't be a dog man because I was female, but I never want to be a dog man. So that was it, so that's all I ever wanted to be. So I went to school, studied, worked hard, did my levels, stayed on, did my levels, still got asked, so you to university, you never going to be a dogman. And it's a job that has brought with it some fascinating war stories. One that springs to mind more than most is a search with her first German shepherd, Milo. One night they were called to help find a missing woman who was thought to have been in a cemetery. So off we set, and we're searching it, and looking around, and he disappears off, he comes back and disappears off. And then he disappears off behind some bushes, he's gone for a bit. I'm thinking, so he's not right here, so calling him and eventually he comes back. Then I see he's got something in his mouth. And then I look and I see that it's a bone. And I'm thinking, oh no, oh no, please, please, no, no, you've not dug up a grave. Please tell me you've not dug up a grave. Please, please, please. So I then pretend, they then spend the next 10 minutes trying to uh, coax him to give back up the said article so I can see what it is. And he's thinking, no, it's mine, I found it. So we have this bit of a debate going on, and eventually he gives it up, and then I put him on the lead. And then I think, right, I'm gonna have to go and find out what's going off. So I've got this bone in my hand, and I'm thinking, oh no, what am I gonna do? Can you imagine the amount of reports I'm gonna have to sit down and write? This is all your fault, Milo. So I'm chuntering away at him. So we go up round, into this hedge, looking, and then I look down and think, oh, thank God for that. There's a KFC bucket, and he has found the chicken wings and the legs. So fortunately it wasn't, it was a bone, but it wasn't a human one, fortunately. So yes, dogs can cause you chaos. One thing all dog handlers agree on is that no two dogs are the same. Rachel's two, Sandy and Carrie, had their own very unique personalities, as well as an incredible set of skills. Let's see, Carrie, uh, my German Shepherd, or bark and bite dog as I like to refer to her, she's a thinker. She doesn't waste time with too much energy on uh, barking and making a, a nuisance of herself. It's like, once she's decided that she doesn't like someone, 
she targets you and that's it. There's no grey area. So um, she's totally different to my other dogs. Uh, she's very independent, likes to do her own thing. When we go out walking, she's quite happy to just be off the lead and off she goes. She's a lovely dog. I would quite happily search for a missing person who is young or vulnerable and I know that she would just stay with them and just, just stay with them and bark and she'd be quite happy to look after them. So that's always nice to know. While Carrie is content with her own company, Sandy is quite the opposite. She's a diva, so likes to be centre of attention and is a great little dog. She's always happy, always enthusiastic and just loves doing what she does. She doesn't even know she's at work. She just thinks every dog gets to do what she does. So she goes everywhere, doesn't care, loves people, doesn't care who you are, what you are. She absolutely adores people. In fact, to the point where we did a drugs warrant at an address up in Codner and we searched it. And when she got there, um, the person we were expecting to be inside wasn't there yet. There was a freshly brewed cup of coffee sat on the table, a cup vice person, so we started the search. We're searching, we searched one bedroom and she found some uh, white powder, etc. So we noted that. We then started to search the second bedroom and she decided to go under the bed, which is normal. But she was under the bed for a long time, so I thought, oh, she's stuck. No, she hadn't got stuck. What Sir Sandy had done was she was under the bed and she was now sniffing and licking what turned out to be the arm of the guy who was supposedly not in the address. So Sandy had now not just become a search dog for drugs, cash and firearms, she was now finding people. So we had to go and fetch the gentleman out. But she thought he was wonderful. She was looking his arm with a massive guy with big tattoos who obviously was a little bit put out that the dog had found him. But, you know, that's Sandy. That's how she is. She doesn't see any, any nastiness in anybody. She just sees everybody as a friend. With Rachel set to retire, Carrie and Sandy will also be leaving the force for some well-deserved rest. And that means a set of vacancies in Derbyshire's dog section, which have all been eagerly snapped up. Wrong side, it's the other way. There's a certain type of person that wants to be a dog angler. And part of that, you don't have to be mind smelling of wet dog, being covered in mud most of the time, walking around with poo bags and finding that every, every coat you've got in your house has a poo bag in it. By the way, they are empty. Um, you, you just live and breathe dog. You, you just love it and that's how you are. And it's not for everyone, but you know, it's, it's, a, well, it's just unique. There's no getting around it. It's a bittersweet time for Rachel, watching a new set of dogs joining the unit and finding their feet, but knowing she won't be at dog section to see them hit their stride. But she knows she's leaving the lead in good hands. I just love doing it and I, I, I will miss it. I will miss it. I will miss the people I'm going to cry at. But I will miss it. I'll miss putting. I will miss being part of the, the big family that is Dodge. Sorry, I'm going to cry. Um, oh dear. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm fine. Sure. I compose myself, compose myself. So, uh, yeah, and um, well, what more can I say? Uh, I've just done short of 30 years of being part of Derbyshire, so it will be a big wrench. But I'm glad that there's some new people to take over from me, and they'll do a fantastic job. And I'm right. <laughs> <laughs>